Um, I'm very excited to be here, actually. Uh, thank you very much, Fido Alliance, to make this actually happen. It is, it is so good to talk to people and to experience it and not to have these virtual uh, meetings all the time. So I'm very glad it's happening. Um, I'm not glad about the fact that I'm alone here. There is no Dennis next to me. He will join virtually, um, and I think that's fine. But we really wanted to have him on stage too. So what we will present is um, our journey to implement FIDO or how we implemented FIDO. And that was obviously um, a team work, right? Not someone alone. So we wanted to have more people up here. At least virtually it works out. Um, we are working for a company, a science and technology company, um, that is called EMD Group. Uh, it has about, let's say, 60 to 80,000 users. And the implementation that we have chosen focuses on our internal workforce and not the customers so far. There's one more thing that you already addressed. We are called EMD Group here uh, in North America. Everywhere else we are known as Merck. There is another company that is called uh, Merck or Merck here in America, which is called MSD in the rest of the world. We are not related, okay? So I only talk about the other one. Perfect, let's start. This is the video that we show for all our internal people. In recent years, the number of cyber attacks has exploded. The gateway into our digital world are our accounts and passwords. So we tried to protect ourselves better by making our passwords longer and more complex. And once again, longer. We introduced shorter and shorter intervals in which passwords must be updated and two-factor authentication. The problem is, all these solutions only make us a little bit safer. Unfortunately, they can be easily fished and abused from the outside. Time to fundamentally rethink things, simpler and safer, with FIDO. FIDO stands for Fast Identity Online. This standard requires a physical device to access the Merck world, as we know it from a key. Except that a FIDO key looks more like this. The FIDO key must be first unlocked, like here with a personal pen, and a physical touch of the key. Only the physical device completes the authentication, which makes it particularly secure against the usual phishing attacks. The good thing is, like the FIDO key, you can also use many other devices as FIDO authenticators. For example, your office computer with Windows Hello Pen, your smartphone with Face ID, or with a device with fingerprint. It's in your hands. Register all your FIDO authenticators in the Credential self-service portal now. And soon, log in without any password. No matter where you are at Merck, in safety critical production, at the office, in the home office, or on the road to the customer's site. It has never been so secure to log in to our systems and never so easy to become a cyber hero. So that's how we introduce it and Let's welcome Dennis, <laughs> virtually. As you have seen in the video, the identity-based attacks and breaches increased significantly over the last few years. Hackers don't break in, they sign in. Our mission is to secure our company against these threats. And we believe FIDO plays a major role. It is a solution for all of these problems, because it is easy to use, device bound and phishing resistant. We are really happy to share our FIDO journey with you. This journey started two years ago. Our identity and access management guiding principles influences the way how we design our FIDO solution architecture. And this architecture looks a bit different 
compared to the mainstream approach. We decided against a software as a service solution where the FIDO credentials are stored by a single provider in the cloud. That is something we don't want. Our primary guiding principle is to own the credentials and to own the authentications. We want to have full control. Since there was no off-the-shelf solution available, we started our own development journey. We are a global DevOps team consisting of internal employees and externals. We prefer to integrate existing open source components and applications. But if there is no ready to use solution available, we develop what is necessary with a hybrid cloud approach. In the next 20 minutes, we want to give you insights about our credential self-service, our self-hosted infrastructure, the journey to FIDO only enforcement, hurdles that we encountered, and at the end of our presentation, we will give you a short wrap up and also have time for Q&A. So did you hear that? Did you understand that? We don't want to use a platform. We really want to own our identities, the credentials, and the authentication. That's, that's the principle. That's the guideline. This is how we design our identity-centric security architecture. Very simple, but then easy to follow. Good. Let's uh, look into our, our self-service. Um, let's assume that, that you are a joiner, a new joiner, right? So how does this work out? You have to somehow um, register a FIDO authenticator. Or you are probably someone who is already in the workforce and you need to recover your authenticator or your account. This is why we designed our own credential self-service. And um, there is no other fallback solution in the background, no teams that can do something manually. This is the way that you funnel through in order to get your authenticator. And in this credential portal, we integrated identity verification. Now let's look or focus on the identity verification part. Um, we as a company, we have only limited data, right? We know about you as a new joiner, probably your name, last name, phone number, email address, something like that. And of course, we have organizational data. Um, when we looked at it, we found out that we only have two solutions actually to identify and thus register a person. The first one is we use the organizational data. Um, we can make use or leverage your team or the manager who interviewed you to have a social identification, right? And that's perfect because it works for everyone in the company. So this is something that we can always use, but it has one downside, right? The self-service needs to trigger a person and a person is not always available. So we wanted to have something else um, that we can make use of. And the only thing that we have in our database that is connected to a person that we can then connect to a device is the phone number. If you have a phone, you have a SIM card. Maybe you have two, but it's always a device, right? And this is what we might use of and develop the phishing resistant um, phone number verification. We did this together with a company, uh, TrueID for TrueID. Kudos, it worked very, very well. It's an awesome cooperation. I think the colleague is sitting over there, if you have any questions to that. And this is what we are using, right? This verification has one downside, which will hopefully um, getting better over time. Not every mobile network operator supports it yet around the world. So we cannot use it for the entire workforce right now. Good, perfect. Now we have identified you. We can now start the registration. How does this work? Um, you can register any device that is FIDO2 ready. I mean, you can take your, your laptop with probably Windows Hello. You can take your, your iPhone with Touch ID or Face ID or whatever, or a security key um, that you can make use of. And when you register it, you have the next challenge actually right in front of you that we had to solve. Once you have registered, for instance, your laptop with Windows Hello, how do you register the phone? I mean, remember, FIDO is phishing resistant, right? It only works on that device that you can authenticate. So we implemented for us, only for the registration, not for authentication, a phishing resistant device switch that you can use 
the credential portal to register another device without going through an identity verification process once again. Good. Um, let me summarize this. It's a self-service. Uh, it's used for new joiners and uh, the workforce that we have. It has uh, instant, more or less, um, identity verification. You can register and delete your FIDO authenticators. We have a device switch, um, and um, you can use it even to register another device. It has other features like step-by-step -step guidance because not everyone is used to it, obviously. And uh, I talked about the trademark issue at the beginning, right? So it comes with two URLs that we have to authenticate against. So we have to, uh, to register every device twice um, for a person. Otherwise, that person wouldn't be able to work here in America. Good. Let's go. Dennis again. The core of our FIDO infrastructure is an Alliance certified open source FIDO server, which is hosted by ourselves. Why? Because then we have really full control over all registered FIDO credentials and we remain open for further use cases and further FIDO consumers. For example, several relying parties can use the FIDO credentials for authentication or we can use the FIDO credentials for transaction confirmation in the future. We extended the FIDO server with an additional service to fulfill specific and individual business needs. For example, store metadata, send events to notify other systems about um, executed operations. We named this application FIDO Wrapper. One of our main goals is to enable FIDO authentication during web-based single sign-on. Our company has multiple identity providers and there is no out-of-the-box integration with our FIDO server. Therefore, we develop plugins for each identity provider. These plugins are invoking the FIDO authentication process and then forwarding the authentication request to our self-hosted FIDO server. The FIDO credentials are registered with user verification as requirement. Therefore, we can use them not only as second factor, we can use them as first factor. That means that we can authenticate the user completely passwordless. In the near future, we want to release the ability for usernameless authentication. Therefore, we are already registering all FIDO credentials, if possible, as discoverable credential. We have a large user base and not all users are enrolling and getting confident with FIDO overnight. Therefore, we have a transition phase. This phase can be started for users individually as needed. During this transition phase, the user can use both authentication methods in parallel. The user can still authenticate with conventional MFA, but FIDO will be always advertised as preferred authentication option, so the user can get used to the new authentication mechanism slowly and step by step. But having conventional MFA still available means that the users are vulnerable to downgrade attacks, resulting in the problem that the user can still be fished. And to mitigate this, we enforce FIDO for individual users at a specific point in time. That means that no other authentication mechanism uh, except FIDO is possible. And only this unleashes full phishing resistant uh, security. We eliminated a major roadblock blocker during this, which prevented FIDO only enforcement. Because there are many apps and applications with legacy web views. These apps are actually not FIDO compatible because they are not implementing the web or Zen API and the user cannot log in with FIDO into these apps. 
we developed a detached authentication mechanism. With that mechanism, the users are able to authenticate with FIDO in a phishing resistant way, even if the user needs access to apps with legacy web views. Meaning, we can enforce FIDO. Perfect. So let me summarize what he just said. We are using an open source certified FIDO server. Uh, kudos to Strongkey. You find them in the hall at the window over there. It's also uh, an awesome corporation. We have it all uh, self-hosted and under our control. We have individual requirements that we uh, address with a wrapper, like our two domains that we were talking about earlier. Um, we developed IDP plugins that we use for our IDPs, and with those we can enforce um, FIDO as a first factor. Um, we can, but we don't have to, allow conventional or legacy MFA. Um, this is important for our training phase when a user is not used to FIDO. And most importantly, as he said, we, we can enforce FIDO even though we have applications and apps that are not FIDO ready yet. Good. Um, what would you do to get there? If you are a company like us and you want to implement FIDO, how do you get there? So I can only recommend to take an approach similar to the one that we have chosen. I don't know whether it's really good, um, but it works. So I can recommend to start with the infrastructure. First, set up your own um, FIDO server, get used to it, train with it, and um, connect, it to your, connect it to your IDP. Then think about a credential self-service portal, something where you can make a user register a FIDO authenticator and let him identify, right? And what really helped us was to, to start very early with the rollout, to actually push it into production. It was really ugly at the beginning, right? That it, it was not nice. Uh, it had very limited features, but it was tested, pen tested, and it was secure. And we had it very early in production in parallel to our MFA. So it was not important that it really all the time worked. But thus we were able to get a lot of feedback and to get used to FIDO authentication on the different OS and browser systems that we have, right? We were not used to it. We needed to learn it. And I can only recommend to start like that. Additionally, we were able to actually have wave of early adopters and start the onboarding already, even though it was not really in, uh, there yet for the entire company. The next thing is the, uh, the new joiner and onboarder switch. You really want to make sure that there is no inflow uh, of, of users who, who don't know what a FIDO authenticator is, right? So if you are a new joiner in our company, you should not know about any legacy authentication. You shouldn't use an authenticator app or SMS code or anything like that. You should just know FIDO. That's the reality and nothing else. Um, <clears throat> then comes a troublesome part. It's the workforce that is existing, right? You need change management. People don't want to change. Uh, they don't like it. So I can recommend to start this in a, in a second step, you know, as the first one. And you really need support by, by your teams, right? By end user support, multipliers, you name it. And at the same time, it is very hard and, but important to enforce FIDO, right? You can have a training phase per user to use both in parallel for those who are used to it. But you really want to push them to FIDO because otherwise it doesn't really help. You're not truly phishing resistant. And then comes the tough part. How do you enforce it for users who don't sign up, for test accounts, blah, blah, blah. Well, it's, uh, it's up to you to play hardball here. That's five minutes. Oh, I'm, I'm running. Okay, okay. Um, that's the journey that we had. Give me a second for a summary here. Um, quickly, go live early, get feedback. Take the agile, let's say, it, um, approach. Get, you, get early adopters to use it and get as much feedback as possible. And then start with the new joiners, switch then to the workforce. Let's look at the hurdles. I will only focus on the big ones, not the smaller ones. I hope that we can actually publish a white paper together with the FIDO Alliance um, to also address the tiny parts that are actually time consuming. But I would really like to have the big ones here. Um, the FIDO lines, this is, this is honest feedback, right? It's constructive feedback. Don't take it offensively. 
Um, the first thing that we are missing is identity verification. We have our own stuff that we develop, and it works fine, it's okay, but we really want to have um, the decentralized identity. Please, please, please make sure to push it as fast as you can, because um, this is really a pain to get there. Um, the second thing is the web views without WebAuthn. It is annoying that we have to develop something um, because of all the legacy stuff that is out there. I mean, it's great that we have it now, but it would really, really help also for a usability perspective um, to have this available everywhere, WebAuthn. And it would be great if the big players in the game can actually support this. So for us, it would really help if, um, for instance, Microsoft supports this on iOS with, I don't know, OneDrive, OneNote, uh, Outlook, because right now it is not supporting WebAuthn, and this is a pain for us. So I'm looking very much forward to, to any updates there. Um, then the next topic is passkeys. Um, FIDO is in use. It is in companies, and it, it is really used in a productive environment, right? And this means we have to keep backwards compatibility. Um, recently, as an example, there was um, the announcement of OS 16, which is great. Um, for us, it was a problem, a real problem, um, because we didn't know there are new requirements. We have a policy that we are not allowed to synchronize any passwords into the cloud. So the second that users installed iOS 16 on their devices, authentication was gone. And then you can't use your iPhone anymore. We didn't know about this. Obviously, we could have known if we had looked into it, but we were not aware that we have to do it. It would really help to somehow get a feedback regarding this so that we can prepare for something like that. Um, the next thing about passkeys is I completely understand the beauty for the consumer market regarding passkeys. I've seen all the speeches here, and I understand why we are pushing into this direction or the FIDO Alliance. For us, as a company, with those three very simple principles that we have, it's a nightmare. We don't want it. We want to have a FIDO authenticator device bound. It should not be able to travel somewhere in the cloud or be shared or anything like that. For us, it's from then on like a password with a little more features. So it would be really great if you push it and continue like that, but keep an opt-out for the companies who want to use it differently. That would be really great. Then about the um, harmonized FIDO experience. Um, right now, it is different on every OS. Oh, yeah, I'm ready in a second. It's different on every OS and um, uh, in every browser. So it would really help to have error messages and UI synchronized, and probably a task force would help to, to get this done. I have to hurry. I'm sorry. Um, let's make a very, very quick summary. We follow principles. I told you about owning credentials, identities, and so on. Um, we really love that the open industry FIDO standard allows us to do this. This is how it works for us. It allows us to implement our own um, solutions and to use SaaS services, and it allows us to have a choice and to make our own decisions. That is always important because we as a company are probably different to other ones, and this is the only way how to do it. So read through it if you want the summary. I will stop now, otherwise we don't have any QA time. Um, that's it. Thank you very much, Fido Lines, for making this happen. Thank you, Andres. And unfortunately, we don't have time for question now. Ah, so I was totally over time. That's okay. I'm here. If someone has a question, then please come forward. Thank you very much.